Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling, and I'm your host. The other day, uh, MP Anand, the president of the Treasury, who's a lawyer, so I don't know how that qualifies her, but anyway, she was called before the Yogo to explain the um, estimates for the 24 25 budget that they're trying to pass with nearly 40 billion extra dollars going into debt. And then they came back and asked for a billion nine more a couple of weeks ago. And MP Cousy was on the conservative side and she ripped her to pieces. I mean, I am certain that Anita, MP and Nand probably went outside and had a bit of a cry at the end of it all because she just tore her to shreds and she was so frustrated at the end that she just started yelling at the chair for it. Like, I don't, I don't understand why she started yelling at the chair, but whatever, you'll listen, you'll see. Uh, before we get into it, I would encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share this channel with your socials. So a couple, she had two rounds, uh, MP Cousy had the six minutes and then the five minute round to, to speak to the um, Treasury President MP Anand. And a couple of times the Liberals tried to jump in by saying, oh, we're gonna, they're having a hard time with the translator and the chair had to put them in their place. I, I cut it out because it was 11 minutes and it was just too long. So I, I only took out some of the most juicy bits to watch. You can see how uh, MP Cousy just rips a new one into her. It's really quite kind of interesting to see. All right, let's check it out. Four governance ministers are acting like all other Canadians and examining their own pocketbooks. That was your quote. Do you believe that Canadians have examined their pocketbooks and have decided that they can spend more? the way you have. Is that really what you're thinking? That they are examining their pocketbooks and are making the decision to spend more and can spend more as you are? I don't think they are. What would you like to tell Canadians on that, please? The intention of that point was to say that this is a time where we need to be prudent with our spending. And at the Treasury Board of Canada, our role is to oversee government spending and to ensure that we undertake a risk analysis at all times of that spending. Thank you. And Being so prudent when with we your table spending, the main Minister, estimates, that are, is the how goal. do you think the younger generation looks right now at you and your government with a $39.8 billion deficit in the current budget. Do you really think they believe that you are being prudent with a $39.8 billion deficit that not only this generation, but the next generation is going to have to pay off? Do you really think that's being prudent, Minister? Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chair, we have the... Um the lowest debt to GDP ratio in the G7 and a AAA credit rating. And at the same time, we are maintaining that fiscal prudent track and we are also providing supports to Canadians through dental care, through pharmacare, contraception for women so that they can make their own choices Minister, about their Canadians, bodies. Canadians, when Mr. they're standing Chair, in line at the food bank, don't care about the debt to GDP ratio. They don't care about that. They just care that their tummies are empty and that they want food on the table to feed their families. Unlike the Conservative no, government Minister, before the us, government is currently done, spending Chair, more point, on point debt servicing uh, costs sorry, than they are on um, health transfer order, payments. Sorry, I'm Mr. just Chair, trying to... See, so here the Liberals tried to interfere. They tried to say, oh, she's talking mean to her and, and the translators are going to... And the chair had to tell them that the translators have their own process to, to mention that. You don't have to worry about it. I think that um, on what Ms. Anand tried to say, how dental and birth control pills are better than being... They are better than having a good economy and having food on the table is kind of odd when you consider that the bulk of the people that are going to be standing in line are going to be women, single mothers who are going to say to themselves, well, you know what? This birth control is not keeping my child's belly full. It's certainly not keeping my child full, my belly full. And I don't know where she makes that connection. Like the, the, the she's just, they're just so used to saying these talking points, right? But they're not answering any, anything of any substance, in my opinion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Minister, in the main estimates, it, it stated $46.5 billion was required simply to service our debt. This is in addition to this year's $39.8 billion deficit. Now, in the supplementary estimates, you have come back and asked for another $1.9 billion, as though this $1.9 billion was an oversight to service the national debt. Why were these numbers not properly accounted for in your main estimates just a few months ago? And 
what can we as Canadians expect in the future in terms of a further amounts that have not been accounted for as a result of your bad accounting? <laughs> On the what issue of the debt, I will say that our government has made a decision to ensure that we have strong fiscal markers like a AAA okay, credit yeah. rating, like the lowest, lowest jet to GB, GDP ratio in the G7, while supporting Canadians, while ensuring that we have affordable housing supports in place, while ensuring that we have dental care available for our population. The minister, and why are well, one Mr. in four Chair. Canadians skipping meals? Again, what, the one in four Canadians that are skipping meals really don't take comfort in these. You stated that the three individuals you found Found committing $5 million worth of fraud in contracting were only the first tranche of individuals. Are you ready today to tell Canadians the number of individuals who uh, you have determined to be committing fraud and you have now uh, um, turned over to the RCMP? Can you give that number, please? It, it is within your purview, and especially given that you were previously the Minister of Procurement, you should have an idea as to these numbers. If you can't tell us how many individuals have been turned over to the RCMP as a result of fraud, can you at least please tell Canadians how much they have been scammed out of, how much fraudulent money has been paid out as a result? The money from the Arrive Scam scandal. Can you report to Canadians that you have gotten that $60 million back? For the Arrive Scam I can scandal. report to Canadians that as soon as the RCMP report comes back on the Arrive Can issue, so that's we a will no. follow You the promised the last time I saw Mr. you Chair, that you would get the money order, back for I Canadians. Mean... Uh, Mr. Chair, so can you tell Canadians today clearly, as you promised them the last time that we spoke in a committee environment, that you have recouped the 60 plus million dollars because as the Auditor General indicated, it is a minimum of $60 million. You have recouped those funds for Canadians, as you promised you would. Mr. Speaker, there is an ongoing investigation. Any wrongdoing will be taken into account. I stand by my comments that the government will seek to recover taxpayers' money that was spent That's a inappropriately. No, Mr. That's clear. We are you know. waiting for the RCMB investigation to conclude. That's a no. If you'll notice that she was staring down at the piece of paper and she said, Mr. Speaker, because she's just writing an answer that was already handed to her, that was written and then copy pasted into this new piece of paper that she got today. That's why she opened with Mr. Speaker, because she's not even answering the question. She's not thinking about the question. She's not thinking about the answer. She's only thinking about what's written on that paper. And as a, like a good little robot, she's repeating whatever the speechwriter told her to say. Whoever's controlling the message is the person that should be put on this chair. Of course, I have comments about our expenditures. I am the president of the Treasury Board, after all. Minister, I don't want to talk about agreement uh, for please, the border services. I wouldn't be workers. so excited to share your title with a $39.8 billion uh, deficit, Minister. Excited <laughs> to announce burn. that you're going to find $50.4 <laughs> billion dollars in savings across all government departments over the next five years. However, in Budget 2024, more than $52.9 billion in new spending over the next five years was announced. This new spending is now more uh, than three and a half times as much as you announced in savings in August. So how has this initiative done anything to show fiscal restraint with you, as you have said, the president of the Treasury Board, as with you being that, and prove to Canadians that your government can responsibly handle money? Well, I would take a look at the external markers that indicate fiscal prudence, Mr. Chair. A AAA credit rating is actually an independent assessment. Minister, these are cold comfort. This Mr. is cold comfort for Canadians. Be able to and if you, to these if you, questions? if you will not Mr. listen Chair? to the Prime Minister's office regarding your leadership I, campaign, I hope you will at least listen to Canadians. Thank you very much. I would really <laughs> like to be able to respond to questions, <laughs> Mr. Chair. It's oh, very unprofessional be... to interrupt oh. me when I'm actually okay. just trying we, to respond. We're out of time, unfortunately couple things. I don't think that the Liberals should be talking about unprofessional when they clearly think that it's professional to just stall, right? To say things. How many times are, are and we're going to hear about this AAA credit rating? Nobody cares about your credit rating. If your credit is so strong, then why don't you stop borrowing money and start generating money? How many, if, let me put it to you in another way. If this was a relationship and your wife would stop, wouldn't stop spending money, would you say it's okay because you have a good credit rating? 
Or would you say, holy Lord in heaven, will you stop spending all of the money because I can't save any of the money. You spend it faster than I make it. And if it was your husband spending all the money, would you say to yourself, oh, no, 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 no. I can't do that because he's spending it faster than I make it. Don't worry, they would say. Our credit is good. So we can just continue to borrow money and our grandchildren can pay it back. Because that's essentially what we're talking about here. We're talking about people who are just running up the debt saying, oh, no, it's okay. Because sooner or later, our AAA credit rating will be downgraded. And then our interest rates will shoot up through the roof. The entire economy will collapse. And we will all be sitting in hungry town. Either they know it could happen and they don't care. Or they don't know it could happen and they don't want to hear it. Right? One way or the other. These are not people who can be trusted with the bank book. These are not people who are being prudent or responsible. And when you got tent encampments popping up all over, all over the country, when you got unemployment flying through the roof, when you got no jobs going out, when you got no money being generated and all you're doing is when you spend more on debt than some countries have for their entire uh, budget for the year, $50 billion just going to the banks that are, that are holding our paper, right? You are not considered prudent and no triple A, blah, 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 changes any of it. Because at the end of the day, we're in super duper debt. We're paying more out than we're in debt than we're paying to our hospital. So our standard of living is going to the crapper. We got no food. We got no houses. We got, I mean, the food banks are, are empty. There's no place for the people that are homeless to live. I mean, the, the, the amount of problems that are happening in this country, despite the fact that you keep, you've been talking about this triple A credit rating for years. So th where are the problems being solved? Why are they not being corrected? And that's really what I think Miss Cousy is upset about. I think that she's just sick and tired of having people feed a bunch of malarkey and expect us all to be polite and not interrupt and do all of these things that they expect because that's what they're hoping on, right? They're hoping that if you will, if you interrupt them, they're going to manipulate that situation to distract from the fact that you're, they think that's going to make you forget the fact that you're hungry and that the, the, the wolves are at the door. That's what it seems like to me, because it's been years. It's not like a couple of weeks we've been hearing this. I mean, this is the whole second session of far, of of, of uh, Parliament that we've been hearing how the credit is good and blah, blah, blah. Well, of course, the credit is good. Any banker sitting there saying, don't worry about it. They got veins of silver. We can just take those instead. Anyway, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you all for listening. I would appreciate it if you would like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share this channel with your socials. I have memberships if you want to support the channel that way. I'll talk to you next time.